good morning, everyone. Um, it is 10 o'clock now. We're going to hit the record button and then we're going to oh, go. Actually, we did hit the record button. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jennifer Redquist. Thank you so much for joining um, CalTAP as we explore um, elder care services for veterans. Um, Again, my name is Jennifer Redquist. I work for the California Department of Veterans Affairs as a CalTAP training coordinator. Um, my job is to assist military service members, veterans, and their families learn about and access their earned state and federal benefits. Um, just a little bit about me. Um, I am a veteran myself. I served the United States Air Force from 1996 to 2000. My dad served for 20 years in the United States Air Force. Um, so I was a military brat. Um, and now I am actually still serving as um, a military spouse and the mother to two um, active duty service members. Um, so I'm very, very proud. And I can also say that, and I can totally relate to every single one of you that are out there watching. Um, I, I, I've been in your shoes um, and I understand the hardships that you've all had to endure to ensure our country's freedom. So I just wanna say thank you, whether you're a family member or your friend or you're a veteran, um, thank you for serving your country and supporting the United States Armed Forces. Um, let's get started. There we go. Just a little bit of a housekeeping before we begin. We want to encourage everyone to utilize the mute function um, and turn off your cameras. This helps with distractions and also helps um, to minimize, uh, to assist with bandwidth. If for any reason you guys get kicked off or you have to step away, no problem. Just come back whenever you're ready. Know that it might take a couple minutes because we have to manually let you buy back in. Next, I wanna go over the things that were emailed to you guys last night and maybe even emailed to you this morning. Additionally, the first thing is your PDF of the Calvert Resource Book. This is exactly what uh, the hard copy looks like but you got a nice PDF of the resource book. This resource book is incredible, you guys. All of your benefits are at your fingertips. Um, I was out of the Air Force for 50, over 15 years before I used or knew about any of my benefits. I kept on hearing I had benefits, but I didn't know what those benefits were. I went to a local county veteran service office and they handed me one of these books and I was blown away by all the different resources um, and benefits that are out there for veterans and their families. So basically it is gold, you guys, T check it out. The next thing you guys got was the link map, the contact flyer. This is um, also a fantastic resource. The, it is a map um, and a contact flyer for our links. There are boots on the ground. You're gonna learn more about that and you're gonna meet one of CalVet's links later on this presentation. I'm so glad you guys joined this presentation because it is packed with so much fantastic information and we have, fantastic presenters to include um, Annette Walliver. She is our CalVet link. And then we have Chief, retired Chief Master Sergeant Paul uh, Lindbergh. He is Yauntville Homes VSO, his veteran service officer. And last we have Mark George. He is our Chief of Operations um, for Cemeteries. So I'm so, so glad that you guys joined. All right, with so much fantastic information, um, there's going to be quite a bit of questions. To help with questions and keep this presentation moving, we ask that you send your questions to CalTAP Questions. Jana Adams, another one of CalTAP's fantastic training coordinators, is here on the back end monitoring the chat, and she'll be answering any questions and recording questions so that at the end of the presentation, we can address all those in our questions and answer section of the presentation. All right, let's get started with the CalTAP overview. So what is CalTAP? So CalTAP is designed to inform and connect veterans of all areas of, um, of their earned federal and state benefits, as well as provide support and assistance as your needs change. So I want you to know, and I'm going to, I want to re, um, reiterate that CalVet is here for you guys. And whether it is right now that you need services or later on, we are there to assist you guys. So we um, do this through five different pathways. That's core curriculum, education, employment, entrepreneurship, and service providers. So this is everything I'm going over. I want you to know it's in the resource book, but also you can also get everything in um, on our website. To find our website, it's super duper easy. All you have to do is Google CalVet, or you can Google California Department of Veterans Affairs. This website is 
so user friendly. I highly recommend that you guys go to this website and just play with it, um, explore it, um, and don't be afraid of getting into rabbit holes and you know losing hours uh, playing with it because you're going to learn so much from it. Um, and you know those rabbit holes they lead to carrots. Carrots are earned benefits. Earned benefits is money in your pocket. So please, please, please play with it. But for the purposes of this presentation, we're gonna to go to CalTAP portal right there with circled in yellow. So from there, you're gonna see um, our portal that has five different modules that I was telling you, telling you about earlier. Those pathways are right there. Also, I wanna point out circled in yellow is archives. In addition to this fantastic webinar, CalVet has hosted, I, over 215 webinars since um, last April. It's insane. Um, so we have recorded some of those webinars we have recorded and are in archives. So you can learn about employment opportunities, maybe education benefits, all sorts of great, great stuff. Just go to uh, archives and click on one of those recordings. How can you use CalTAP online? So here's your pathways. We're gonna start with core curriculum because it's a nice basic place to start. And then we can expand from there. Once you do that, you're gonna see all those different modules in, the, um, in that core curriculum, uh, including healthcare, um, there's claims and compensation, all sorts of finances, awesome, awesome stuff. But we're gonna start with California benefits, nice basic place to start. What are the California benefits? Again, you can find everything in your resource book and it starts on chapter one. California tuition fee waiver. This is fantastic. This is for your uh, for veterans dependents. Um, it waives the tuition and fees at any state funded school. That's UCs, CSUs, community colleges, all the way through your doctorate, you guys. So if you have a child, your child is maybe they've, uh, after high school, they decided um, they didn't want to go to college, but maybe a few years later, they want to go to college. Um, for instance, my dad is retired. He is um, rated um, from the federal VA. And um, because he is, I am eligible for the college tuition fee waiver. I can apply for that. There's a few different programs um, for that. And I could still go to college at 44 years old with this college tuition fee waiver. This is fantastic. Um, it is for any dependents of a veteran that has a disability rating between zero and 100%. Please go to our website to find out more and more details about that and which plans you guys um, fall under. Uh, you'll just go to education and under that go to the college tuition fee waiver. It saves over $35 million a year. It's fantastic. Next thing is DMV programs within the state of California. We have the Veterans designation license. You can get a designation on your license that says a veteran. Why is this so cool? This is cool because you no longer have to carry that DD form 214 or those discharge papers anywhere. All you have to do is show your license to prove that you are a veteran. To get that, you're going to go to your local county veteran service office um, and they're going to assist you with that. You're going to take your DD form 214 and your ID. They're going to verify that, yes, indeed, you are a veteran. They're going to give you a form that's stamped with the county seal and you're going to take that to DMV with, along with $5 and they're going to put veterans on your driver's license. The next thing we have is honoring veterans license plates um, in the state of California. Now, this program is through um, DMV also, but if you want to find out all the different license plates that are available for you to check out, go to our website and go to the right of it where it says search and search up veterans license plates um, or license plates. And you'll find the all the different logos that are out there for you guys to choose. From there, just copy down the uh, number or the code for that and then add that to that DMV form for your license plate. The next thing is a motor vehicle registration fee waiver. This is great. This is going to waive the registration fees of one vehicle for a veteran that is 100% uh, rated by the Department of Def Sorry, 100% rated by the federal VA, and also um, they have they must have a disability that interferes with their mobility. Um, to find out more about that, again, go to your local county veteran service office, and they can assist you with that process. Outdoor activities in the state of California, you can get um, fishing and hunting license and a state park pass if you are rated by the federal VA at 50% or more. This is gonna reduce the fees for your fishing and hunting licenses and, and it's gonna be no cost to use of basic state park system operated facilities. 
Now I'm going through a lot of information um, and uh, I want you to know that Jana is on in the chat and she's putting in a lot of different links um, to include uh, where to go to get these benefits. So for fishing and hunting license, you're gonna to go to wildlife.ca.gov, the same place where you're gonna apply for that, that fishing and hunting license. And the state park pass, you're gonna either go to the parks.ca.gov. Tax programs, there's a disabled veterans property tax exemption. That's gonna exempt up to $150,000 of your property taxes. If you are rated by the department, by the federal VA of 100%. Um, then to get that, you're gonna to go to your county office where you pay your taxes, a county assessor's office. The next thing is the business license tax and fee exemptions. There's some exemptions out there for business owners. So to find out about that, again, you're gonna to go to where you pay your taxes, your business taxes and the licenses, and you're gonna show them that you are a veteran with your, maybe your license, maybe your letter from um, the federal VA. Um, or maybe with your DD Form 214. And the last thing is a Disabled Veterans Pro uh, Enterprise Program. There's so many uh, benefits and discounts and uh, tax incentives for um, veteran businesses. So um, to find out more about that, you're gonna go to our website, go to the CalTAP portal and go to the Entrepreneurship Pathway. CalVet Home Loans. Oh my goodness, uh, I really highly recommend you check this out. Even if you're not interested in buying a home right now, you might know another veteran that is in need of buying a home. Uh, this is a fantastic, fantastic program. CalVet has a home loan uh, division and they provide financing for veterans. Um, their competitive uh, market interest rates, low to no down payment. Your loan is originated, processed, closed, and for the life of the loan, CalVet is going to take care of your loan. There's so many incredible, incredible benefits um, to working with CalVet and getting a loan through them. Um, and uh, Jana is gonna put in a contact for you guys to ask all sorts of different questions, um, or if you're interested in buying it, help you through that process. Um, Again, this is going to be on our website too. All you have to do is go to CalVet Programs and go down to CalVet um, Homes, Home Loans. Next is vet, the CalVet Women's Veterans Division. This is a, fan, a great division within CalVet. Um, they provide information, advocacy, outreach, and support to women veterans. They partner with the California Women's Veterans Leadership Council also to find out more about them. Maybe you're a woman veteran, maybe you know a woman veteran that needs assistance, any type of assistance, housing, employment, um, healthcare, anything. Check out this website. Uh, check out this website. Again, I'm going to point out really quick how to get to these places once more when, when you go on our website. On the main page of CalVet, uh, the CalVet main page, you're just going to go where it says CalVet programs. It's a drop down menu. You're going to click on that and you'll go to women veterans right there. Now, if there's something that you need and is not on here, not a problem. I circled in yellow the email that you can email. And also next to it is a phone number that you can call. And the women's division are extremely, extremely helpful. And if they, they, um, they will find whatever resources that you're looking for. CalVet Minorities Division is also with a division within CalVet. They also provide information, advocacy, outreach, and support specifically to minority veterans. They also can help with unnatural vet veterans in the state of California with citizenship and naturalization services. So to find them, again, you're going to go to the main page, go at the top to CalVet Programs, drop down menu to Minority and our Representative Veterans. Their uh, portal is just very similar to the Women's Veterans Division. And again, I want to point out if there's something that's not on here, um, assistance that you need, uh, you can give them a call or you can email them. So CalVet Homes for Long-Term Care. CalVet has beautiful, beautiful, uh, state-of-the-art, um, all-inclusive long-term care facilities. Um, they provide medical, dental, pharmacy, rehabilitation, and social activities. We have eight different locations within California. Here's a fantastic map of all the different uh, locations of our CalVet homes. Now to find out more about that, maybe you're interested in that, maybe something you don't need now, but you kind of want to check it out and research some more for later, go to our website and uh, go to the, the drop down at the top, 
where it says CalVet programs, you can go there to find their portal right here. It's gonna to talk to you all about the different um, types of level of care that we provide. Um, and it's also, if you scroll down, it's gonna talk about uh, eligibility um, requirements, uh, you can apply. And then if you even look a little bit more down there, you can see about what the wait list times are for each one of the homes. You can see what level of care that each home provides also. So let's say it's not something that you or your family member or whoever needs right now, maybe it's two years from now, but if there's a wait list, uh, get that application in and start um, doing, the, doing the, the, the legwork now. We wanna go over some common veteran websites. The first one is va.gov. This is a fantastic place to start if you're not sure if it's a state benefit that you're looking for or fed, uh, a federal uh, VA benefit that you're looking for, just go here. Um, it, you can go, uh, if there's something on disability, it's a click away, records click away, healthcare, is a click away. everything's a click away. Now, if it's not on va.gov, they're gonna pull you over to the website that it's at, which is really great. This will, uh, they will pour to you over to eBenefits or you can just go to eBenefits.gov on your own. If you're looking to manage your health, um, manage maybe your GI bill benefits, maybe manage, get some VA letters, um, all sorts of great stuff. To use eBenefits, you're gonna need to get a login with the DS login. Once you establish that, I highly recommend you guys write that down store it somewhere, let your loved ones know where that's at. Because if something were to happen to you um, and they needed that DD form 214, they needed those discharge papers or if they needed the VA letters, all they have to do is log, uh, get whatever book that you wrote it in and log in here and get everything that they need to get to those services or those benefits um, if you're not able to get to them. The next thing is My Health Evet. This is fantastic. This may, this is uh, your portal for all VA healthcare needs. Um, so instead of going into a clinic, you can call and make your you can make your appointments right here online. You could uh, message your doctors. You can refill prescri prescriptions. Um, this is a fantastic, fantastic um, resource to you guys. Um, I use it all the time and I talk to my doctors, um, it's great. So v, uh, that's my health event. Next thing is transportation services. I wanna talk about this directly after that my health event because I think this is pretty important. Veteran transportation services provide safe and reliable transportation to veterans and they assist traveling to and from VA health care facilities. They partner with um, different local uh, communities with VSOs, nonprofits, all sorts of great stuff. To find out about these, I would, what I would suggest that you do is I would suggest you either go to va.gov or you can talk to the receptionist at the VA clinic or the hospital that you're going to and say that you need assistance with travel. Now, the next thing is beneficial is travel. So if you have somebody who's taking you to these appointments or maybe it's you yourself. Um, myself, I travel, um, I travel to a VA healthcare facility, you can get reimbursed for those um, that travel expenses. It's really cool. You can either one, download the form from va.gov or two, all you have to do is go into the VA facility that you want, that kiosk that you sign into, there's also, you can also do reimbursements right there. All you do is click in, swipe your card, um, click in your birthday to verify, and then they say what date of the appointment that you are asking for reimbursement, and then it automatically puts in your address and all that good stuff, and they will send you a check later on. It's great. Um, you can also get pre-approved for uh, transportation services um, for a special mode of transportation. Maybe um, the veteran um, has um, a disability that they need to be in a wheelchair or such, and they need a bigger van. And they can also provide that. So VA eligibility, it's um, rating for these different uh, uh, benefits is 30% or higher. Um, and then the traveling for treatment of service connected uh, condition, um, even if it's less than 30%. So let's maybe, maybe you have a 10% um, rating or, or lower. Um, you can still do this if it's, if you are traveling for treatment um, or you have a VA pension or your income is below the VA pension rate um, traveling for uh, claim examination 
um, there also, or uh, traveling to get your service dog, or you just can't afford to pay for travel. So special adapted housing, This you may qualify for this. Um, it's up to $90,000 to use or buy a home. Um, to qualify, you uh, must have a loss or of one or more limbs, uh, the loss of your lower uh, extremities, uh, blindness in both eyes, certain uh, maybe severe burns, um, loss of use of lower extremities, um, which I already said, sorry. <laughs> Special adapted housing grant, you may also qualify for up to $18,000 to use to buy or build or change your permanent home to qualify you, blindness in uh, both eyes with 20 to 200 vision, um, loss of use of both hands, severe burns, or certain respiratory and breathing injuries, which uh, we're definitely, uh, Paul she, uh, is also gonna go over in his presentation. Wow, I went through quite a bit of information, you guys. Um, I just want you to know that CalVet is always here for you. Give us a call. Every single one of us are passionate about what we do and we want to help you guys out. Um, again, there's our website and here's my email. Please email me if you have any questions. If, if something comes up later on and you're like, hey, I remember Jen talking about that. Give me, um, give me an email and ask me further questions about it. Now I'm gonna hand over the floor to Annette Walliver. She is our Inland Empire Link region. Uh, in the link, uh, in the Empire, Empire oh, region. Wait. Central Valley. <laughs> Central Valley. Yes, yes. Are, are you kidding? I love yes. the Central Valley. Yes. So uh, I'm a link. Basically what I am is I'm a field rep for one of the eight in the state of California uh, assisting our veterans, uh, either prior or cur current military service members. Um, so the CalVed has divided the state into eight regions. Each color is a region with a coordinating link. I'm the purple one in the middle, Central Valley. Uh, basically, when I was traveling, you know, if you've been on 99, you know, it's one long straight road, uh, but I cover Stanislaus to Kern counties, uh, representing a, about 144,000 veterans. And even though we work within our own counties, our communities, we also work as a team throughout the state of California, because we are aware of all the state and federal resources, but we, we also want to build our partnerships within our own counties and local VSOs. Next slide, please. So what we do is we provide outreach to service members, veterans, and their families. And we doing this, we, we go to DOD installations. I do uh, workshops at Lemoore Naval Air Station um, at least four or five times a month. Um, we um, make sure that they are aware of all their benefits because it's very important because you don't know what you don't know. And by building these resources here in the Central Valley, our Fresno Veterans Employment Committee, we have about 400 members, which actually um, they communicate with almost all, all of my counties. Um, so I'm able to make referrals and I work directly with these service provider networks. We assist with local emergencies. Um, last year, I had the opportunity to assist SQF and Creek Fire evacuees, um, the veterans, who in some cases lost everything, not only their properties, but most importantly, some things, their paperwork. Uh, and if you know that that DD Form 214 is the gateway to benefits, um, that could be tragic if you can't get it. So by working with the local county veteran service office, we were able to get these documents replaced, uh, the DD Form 214, but also working with CalVet Home Loans, secure a certificate of eligibility so they could go forward and getting a VA or a CalVet home loan or assist them with the paperwork if they had a CalVet loan. Um, currently, we are um, working the eight links of us, us um, are um, fielding the calls that go to 1-800-CALVET in headquarters. And if I get a call from Sacramento or Klamath Falls or San Diego, because I know the state and uh, local res federal resources, I'm able to assist them, but if we need more information, more um, augmented, as I say, resources, I can contact their link um, to get those uh, local community resources that they can speak to. And then we provide leadership and advocacy to local communities. We stay in touch with our uh, veteran service organizations. Uh, we make sure they're aware of their benefits, but we also make sure we find if there's gaps in, in services that perhaps we can communicate and communicate to headquarters. Next slide, please. 
So getting connected to your benefits, I'm the poster child for getting connected to your benefits. Um, I served in the United States Army from 1975 to 1978, um, used my GI Bill, got my degree, uh, got a VA home loan, and I thought I'm pretty much done. But it wasn't until 11 years ago when I started working for the state of California that I realized that I'm a veteran, uh, that I have additional benefits. So these agencies are part and parcel of who we are referrals for you if you need assistance with employment and training. Um, EDD is co-located in the America's Job Center of California. I was an EDD vet rep for eight years assisting veterans uh, with getting employment opportunities. Um, California state benefits, that's what we're all about. Um, and each state is different, but we wanna make sure you understand what your benefits are but we work with the county veteran service offices because they are our boots on the ground, if you will. Uh, they are the ones who administer state and federal benefits and we rely on them tremendously uh, for everything they do, whether it's compensation and pension, DMV forms, college tuition fee waiver pay for, they're there for you. And then let's be mindful of our healthcare. Um, I'm enrolled in VA healthcare uh, and I have a service connected disability. So, you know, take advantage of these uh, facilities uh, VA medical centers and vet, uh, vet centers, um, you can either apply for eligibility online or you can call them and they will set up something for you over the phone. So and a lot of my appointments are through telehealth and VA Connect. I use uh, uh, the um, My Healthy Vet. Um, so these are wonderful things that, that don't expire, which is amazing. You'd think that after a certain amount of time, but I didn't realize I could still take advantage of these benefits. So do so. And then this is me. Um, if you remember nothing else, there's my contact information. Call me, email me, and I'll be more than happy to assist you with any questions or information we need. Thank you. Thank you so much, Annette. Um, thank you so much for everything that you do every single day for all of our veterans out there and the resources that you provide for them all. We're greatly appreciated. And thank you for being presenting today. So now we're going to move on to retired Chief Master Sergeant Paul Lindbergh. He is with our Yountville uh, home. He's a veteran service officer there. Paul, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? I can. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. You can go to the next slide, Jen. So my name is Paul Lukert. Uh, I am a CalVet employee, so I work out at the Veterans Home in Yountville. Uh, but uh, the job I do is similar to your county veteran service officers that uh, some of the folks have already talked about. Um, I am VA accredited, so I do most of my work uh, for the veterans here at the home and some others in the local community, um, helping connect them to their, to their benefits. So uh, some of those include disability benefits, education and training, voc rehab, et cetera. Uh, many of the things that we have talked about today or we'll talk about later. Next. So uh, two of the big benefits that I deal with, VA compensation and VA pension, and sometimes these get a little mixed up, but they are uh, monthly income streams for veterans uh, from the VA. Uh, compensation is payment for an injury or illness that is actually linked to your active duty service. So you have to have a current disability that was caused by an injury or an event in the service. Some examples would be combat injuries, training injuries, exposure to things like Agent Orange or even to hazardous noise, uh, which can cause hearing loss. So that's VA compensation. Again, those are related to your actually to an injury or an event uh, during your active service. VA pension is more of a needs-based um, benefit, and it's primarily for low-income um, veterans, though you do have to have served honorably or at least above a dishonorable and have served during a period of war. And I'll talk a little bit more about both of these programs uh, in some of the slides coming up next. Uh, very quickly, uh, how do you find someone like me? Again, I work mainly for the uh, residents of the Veterans Home out here in Yountville, but I do also help folks in the local community if they happen in. But most of the folks will go to their county veteran service office, uh, and I'll show you how to get there uh, on the next slide. Uh, just like Jen said earlier, if you Google CalVet and click on that link, next. Uh, when you up there uh, at the ribbon on top, you go ahead, you're fine. 
uh, where it says find a service provider would bring up this page here. Uh, you can enter your zip code. You, if you show the next slide, I entered the uh, Yountonville zip code. So that shows for a resident of Yountonville, obviously if they live at the home, they come see me, but if they, if they live in the area, um, those are three of the offices that are located close by. And I went out 50 miles, so I, the screenshot doesn't capture all of that, but it'll, you can show uh, distance from your home if you want it within 10 miles or within 100 miles, it'll show uh, as much as you need. And uh, you, those are active links that you can click on as well. Next. In terms of filing a claim, uh, it's, it, I know this is a busy slide, but it's not an overly complicated process, but you do want to go see uh, your county veteran service officer uh, or that office to file a claim, and, and it has several steps. Uh, but most importantly, what I want to get through to anyone who's never filed a claim today is that um, the, the piece that's kind of circled in the middle there in red under, you know, gathering evidence. So is the evidence of the injury or the, or the current disability you have, is that in your service treatment records? If it is, that is great. And it's really going to help uh, smooth out your claim. But if it's not, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be denied. If it's not in your service record, you want to gather your current treatment records uh, for the condition you know, or the disability that you're claiming. And then you may need a medical opinion uh, from your doctor. Um, where in the doctor's medical opinion, the, even though it's not shown in your service treatment records, this condition uh, you know, had its nexus or its beginnings in service. Once you've gathered the, um, your records, you would go back to your uh, county veteran service officer or make an appointment and file your claim. You will attend an exam typically, and Jen talked about those a bit, and then you, and then you wait for the decision. Next. Okay, I'll talk a little bit about Agent Orange and uh, Camp Lejeune presumptive disabilities. This is a list of some of the presumptive disabilities um, for Agent Orange and, and by presumptive, uh, VA presumes that if you have any of these conditions and you were exposed to Agent Orange, for example, if you served in Vietnam, is a big one, uh, some in Korea as well. Uh, if you have any of these conditions, they will presume that that was caused by your service. You, you really don't have to prove anything other than if you have one of these conditions. The ones that are in red are not highlighted for any particular reason other than those are the ones that I see most often uh, in the demographic that I, you know, that I service out here at the, at the veterans home. But uh, if you have any of these, they apply. In the next slide, uh, there's been an update to the law where three more conditions were added. So bladder cancer, hypothyroidism, and Parkinsonism, which differs from Parkinson's disease, um, were added this year. So if you have any of those three conditions, in addition to any of the others listed, you certainly want to file a claim. And also, maybe even more importantly, if you've ever been denied for any of these conditions previously, you, you definitely want to get uh, with a county veteran service officer um, so that you can file a supplemental claim for those conditions. Next. So Camp Lejeune, if you serve, you're in the Marine Corps, the Navy or, or others uh, and served at Camp Lejeune, um, there are some presumptive conditions associated with the, with the tainted water uh, at Camp Lejeune, and, and these are some of those. Next. Uh, also, for family members that served at Camp Lejeune or, or that, that lived at Camp Lejeune while their, while their family, uh, you know, spouse, uh, et cetera, was stationed there, and those are the dates, August 53 to December 87, um, they may be eligible, even though they're not even a veteran, they may be eligible for healthcare uh, or healthcare assistance uh, in terms of funding from the VA for some of these conditions or for all of these conditions. Next. Okay, uh, you can go next. Compensation and special monthly compensation. So again, these are uh, monetary monthly benefits that the VA pays based on your, on your disability rating. And the rates, the payment rates range from zero to 100% based on your disabilities. Uh, rating from the VA, which also ranges from zero to 100%. And 0% is a rating. So you would be a service connected veteran at 0%, but it's a non, you would get a non monetary award. Uh, it starts paying at 10%, and that's the current rate. Uh, and it goes through 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way up to 100. Uh, and those are the, the rates as of December. Uh, they change every December. They're increased basically at the same rate as Social Security. You can get Money in addition to that, they term that uh, special monthly compensation, uh, and it just provides some additional compensation for other, other factors. And some examples are loss of use. Uh, if a veteran is housebound, aid and attendance, you can get some 
money on top of your uh, disability benefit. Next. Okay, so pension. Um, to be eligible for pension, it's for aged or disabled veterans. So, so by aged, they mean over 65 uh, or disabled. So if you're under 65 and for example, if a veteran is receiving uh, disability insurance from the social security, they would, if they otherwise qualify for pension, they can qualify even though they are under 65, but primarily over 65, uh, you have to have served for 24 continuous months uh, with at least 90 days during a war period. And there are a few exceptions to that. Um, if you're in the Guard or Reserve, you need to have served for the full period to which you were called to active duty. Um, and again, that minimum service of 24 months may not apply if you served prior to September of 88 or you were discharged uh, due to disability. Uh, next. Again, pension is needs-based. It's primarily for low-income veterans. Uh, those are the income limits, and there are many income limits, but those are two common ones. The one on the left, the 13,931 is the income limit for a single veteran. Uh, the next number is the income limit for a veteran with one dependent, like a spouse. Uh, VA counts all income from all sources, um, but they do allow you to offset dollar for dollar your income for medical expenses. So let's say a single veteran makes $2,000 a month, Social Security, uh, obviously 24,000 a year, they, they think they'd be way over that uh, around $14,000 limit. However, if he or she is uh, in a nursing home or paying uh, high prescription fees or even health insurance and many, many other things um, can be used to offset that. Uh, so often um, a veteran doesn't apply because they think they're over income, but they're, they're really missing the, uh, the benefit of those, of those medical expense deductions. So if you have an inkling that you may qualify or that you may need VA pension, please go see your county veteran service officer uh, for some assistance there. There's also, in addition to the income limits, there is a, uh, an asset, what they call a, a net worth limit. Uh, the currently, that figure is there, 137.73. Uh, and these limits are increased each year, again, with the, uh, at the same rate as Social Security's cost of living adjustments. Next. Aid and attendance, next. Uh, this is a, uh, this is a benefit that can be added to your VA pension. It can be added to compensation as well, but it's, it's a little more rare. But aid and attendance is awarded. It's an additional 776 currently, uh, up to 77, up to 776. Um, awarded, you know, if a veteran needs the assistance of another person, or if a veteran's blind, or if they're a patient in a nursing home. So a lot of our veterans out here at the veterans home qualify just by virtue of being in a nursing home. Um, but you do need medical evidence uh, to support the award of, of aid and attendance. And, and don't worry, of, of course, VA has a form for that purpose as well. Next. Okay, survivors uh, and DIC, next. So survivors pension is uh, for low-income um, non-veteran spouses. Uh, and it, the same uh, limits uh, apply similar to pension, although the, the income limit is lower. VA counts all income, and they do uh, consider the non-veteran or survivor's net worth when they're factoring uh, those decisions. DIC is paid at a, a, a higher rate than just the normal survivor's pension, and that's paid to the spouse of a veteran who died from a service-connected condition. For example, if a veteran was exposed to Agent Orange in Vietnam and is service-connected for heart disease and dies of that heart disease, um, his or her spouse uh, may be entitled to that higher rate uh, called uh, DIC. Uh, currently, that rate pays up to about thirteen fifty-seven a month. Uh, a little more if the, if the uh, survivor is rated for A and A or housebound. Next. Okay, so uh, to apply for any veterans benefit, you're certainly going to need a copy of your DD-214. So I usually uh, throw this out there. Very easy to get. You can apply for it online. You could Google uh, the National Archives if you do, and you click the first link. Um, this is where it brings you. I got a big yellow arrow there. You, you, point, you point there, and you can actually uh, click to apply for your DD-214 or other things. You can apply for your military personnel records if you want replacement uh, medals from your time in service, they will uh, send you replacement medals. Um, so you do that right here at, at this website. Next, VA healthcare. Go ahead. Um, so 
eligibility for VA healthcare, uh, similar to the uh, the stuff we talked about pension, except this would be open to all veterans. Uh, typically, you have to have served uh, 24 months or the full period to which you were called to active duty, and the same um, limits if you served prior to prior to September of 1980, you, you wouldn't have had to serve uh, the 24 months, or if you were discharged for a disability, those apply here as well. And you can apply next. Um, you can apply several different ways. You can apply by phone, you can apply in person at your local VA clinic, or you can apply through va.gov. And Jen uh, showed that website earlier. I think we have a screenshot um, coming up. There you go. Uh, this is from the, the va.gov website under the healthcare banner there. Uh, you see the yellow arrow. Uh, click here to apply, and you can start that process there. Probably the easiest if you have a computer. Next. These are some of the information you'll need for to apply for healthcare. Um, your DD-214 again, so we talked about that. You will need income information uh, because there are uh, income factors when considering VA healthcare. Obviously, your Social Security numbers um, and any uh, a list of your current health insurance that you have. Uh, again, easy to do by phone, in person, or online. But if you insist, uh, you can still apply by mail, and that's the form you would use there, the uh, 1010 EZ. Next. I guess that does it for me. Uh, and I'll stick around for the uh, question and answers. Thank you, Jen, and everyone for uh, inviting me to participate today. Thank you so much. So mu that was just packed with so much great, great information. Um, thank you so much for what you do for the community, for veterans, their families. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. Please, everybody take down his number, take a picture of the screen, um, do whatever you need to do um, to <laughs> get that down because he is a fantastic resource to all of you guys. Thank you so much. Now we're going to shift over to cemeteries and burials and mark george our chief of cemetery operations is here to give you some great great information about that stuff are you there i'm here great well good morning everybody a uh, little bit about me um like jen i come from a big military family starting with my great grandfather in world war one grandfather world war two and korea uh, we managed to miss out on Vietnam, but then uh, myself went into Desert Storm, a daughter that just uh, got out of the Navy. So blood runs deep. Um, here at the uh, Veteran Cemeteries, uh, we have three. Go ahead and go to the next slide, please. Um, we have uh, the state runs three veteran cemeteries. There's one here in Igo, which is just out of Reading. Uh, there's one in Monterey at the old Fort Ord, and there's one at the veterans home in Monterey. Uh, you could find us again the same way Jen uh, pointed out. You go to the CalVet programs, uh, click on cemeteries and burials. Um, uh, there's a bunch of links there with all of our documents that are required for eligibility. Uh, pre-need, that sort of thing. Um, there are also several national cemeteries in California, uh, being in the Bay Area and uh, Sacramento National, San Joaquin, Bakersfield, uh, and in the LA area, there is uh, Riverside and uh, Miramar. Um, next, please. Uh, for eligibility, um, there's uh, several uh, ways to establish your eligibility. One, obviously, a veteran who has passed on active duty. Um, anyone that is discharged under um, uh, any conditions other than dishonorable, um, the spouse uh, or minor child of a veteran, even if the veteran has passed away first. And in some cases, the unmarried adult uh, child dependent of a veteran. Um, those cases uh, typically are um, if the uh, dependent is 100% uh, uh, relied upon the veteran uh, for all the way into their adulthood. Um, with the states, uh, with the three state veteran cemeteries, um, there is a fee for the spouse, unlike the nationals. And typically, I like to explain that as States not able to print their own money, so 
um, that fund that uh, fund that the spousal fee goes into uh, will uh, stay there until a hundred years from now or so when the cemetery is closed for burials that money will be there to run the operations of the cemeteries uh, once they stop doing performing burials uh, next please um, as far as burial benefits and allowances from the VA, um, anybody that has a service-connected death uh, on or after September 11th, uh, there's a benefit of $2,000. Um, there is a uh, plot allowance of $807. Uh, that typically, if it's gonna, if you're gonna go to one of the national or state cemeteries, that uh, fee will be collected by the cemetery itself. Um, however, there is a, a burial allowance that you can collect, uh, request of uh, $300 um, as well. And I would recommend that you work with your um, local uh, veteran service office to um, help uh, collect those kind of benefits. Next. Uh, for the uh, government headstones, um, there's several types. Um, the most notable, obviously, is the upright. Um, those are typically granite or marble. Uh, there's also flat uh, uh, markers, bronze. There's the niche bronze, and then there's uh, the veteran medallions. You don't necessarily have to go to a national or state veteran cemetery to um, get one of these types of headstones. You can also go through your veteran service office to apply to get one of those. Those can be put at a private cemetery, uh, but do keep in mind that you're only allowed one of either kind. So for example, you wouldn't be able to ask for an upright or flat headstone and then have a veteran's medallion placed on that as well. So those are just some of those that are available to you. Um, next, please. Uh, military funeral honors. Um, typically, there's two or more service members that will uh, come to perform the honors, um, presenting the flag to the family. They, um, they can play taps. Um, one of the common misconceptions about rifle volleys is that they're performed at any and all uh, veteran uh, funeral honors, and that is not the case. They are uh, typically reserved for retirees and or uh, uh, military members killed in action. Although at this time, most of the uh, military branches are not providing uh, volleys for retirees. Not sure if that has to do with manpower or whatever their reason is, but um, that's typically not um, done unless it's a KIA. Um, however, there are uh, local uh, groups that will come out to do that. Uh, for example, the VFW or American Legion or uh, different uh, Marine Corps groups that uh, you can work with either a funeral home and or the cemetery to help uh, coordinate that. Next, please. <clears throat> Again, there are uh, three state veteran cemeteries operated by CalVet, uh, the Northern California Veteran Cemetery, California Central Coast Veteran Cemetery, and Yountville uh, Veterans Home Cemetery. We also have one that's in the planning stages, which will be the Southern California Veteran Cemetery, which will be located in Orange County. Um, next. National cemeteries, uh, as mentioned before, Bakersfield National, uh, which I actually just visited recently, <laughs> and it was uh, beautiful there, absolutely beautiful. Um, the Miramar National Cemetery, Riverside, Sacramento National, I've been there, and that one's gorgeous, um, and the San Joaquin National Cemetery. Next, please. Pre-need eligibility, I offered both uh, state and nationals. Um, the documents are, are uh, located online. Um, eligibility uh, is open to all for under the VA bar uh, 
that qualify under the VA var variable benefits. Um, the uh, CalVet form VSD002 is located again online at the CalVet website. Um, all we need is a copy of your military discharge. We don't want your originals. Um, if you uh, have a spouse and they would like to be entered with you, um, we just need a copy of that, a copy of your uh, marriage certificate, and um, we will need um, a copy of the death certificate. Um, at the time of need, um, we have um, headstone forms that we would have you fill out. We help you with those. Um, there's not a ton of room on them typically uh, for epitaphs or terms of endearment, um, but we help uh, quite a bit on getting as much in there and on there as we can. Next, please. And that's pretty much it for me as well. Um, again, a lot of information um, I'm on uh, at the end here if you have questions. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, that is so much great, great information. Thank you for, for uh, covering some of those misconceptions that are out there um, and then some clarifications and how to get to um, those benefits. Thank you so much for what you do for veterans, their families, um, and our cemeteries in Calvet. All right, so that completes all of our pre presentations. We're now gonna go on to uh, questions and answers panel, but before we do, I want to point out, or I want to address, uh, Jana put in the chat our survey link. Um, please, 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 uh, uh, we encourage you guys to fill out the survey. The survey um, we utilize uh, to make our presentations, to make um, this, CalVet and make our program better. We implement everything that you guys, um, all the feedback that we get from you guys, we greatly appreciate it. We greatly, um, we honor, you know, your opinions um, and we want to make this the best for you. This is for you and we want to get the information out to you guys and your family. So please let us know how we're doing. Let us know um, things that maybe we're missing or things that are going great. Um, let us know everything um, and we will, do whatever we can to implement it. Uh, with that, um, Jana, do you have uh, any questions in um, the chat? Sorry about that, I had to get off mute. Um, okay. <laughs> yes, I do have some questions. Um, Paul, I've got a couple questions for you to start with. I'm pulling those up right now if you wanna jump off mute. Okay. Um, so this first question, I believe it was asked um, around during the time that you mentioned some possible conditions. And um, somebody asked, um, how about Fort McClellan? How about for what, McClellan? For Fort, Fort McClellan. I, I believe you had mentioned um, uh, Lejeune, I believe. so. Some presumptive was, conditions? Yeah, bro, oh, those presumptive conditions. Yes, I believe that's what. Um, I don't have any information on Fort McClellan. Um, okay. I'm sorry about that. I'll, I can look real quick, but uh, that does not ring a bell to me. Okay, okay. Um, and I can do a little more research on that. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I can look up who asked that, but um, if you ask that question, if you want to send me your email address, um, I can try to look up some information too, and we can um, try to get that information to you after this webinar. Yeah, Jenna, um, I actually have some information on that. I was, oh, um, I went to basic training at Fort McClellan, Alabama, and oh. I know that they were testing uh, Agent Orange, and in fact, it, it was a huge issue. Uh, it hasn't been established by the VA. I know there's a lot of questions and answers on it, but I can mm -hmm. send you the links and information that I have on it. Oh, that would be wonderful. Um, if you um, can send that, or I don't know if that's something, um, if you can't, if you had that if you had a couple links available, you could wanted to post it into the chat or not. But if you can send that to me, I can get that to um, the person that asked that. And if you, the person that asked that question, if you want to um, send your email address in the chat, I can um, get that information to you a little bit later today. Um, so, um, so far, that's the last question I had for you, Paul. I do have a couple questions for you, Mark, as well. Um, while Mark's getting uh, ready to answer um, some questions, um, there were a couple other questions about um, a couple individuals who wanted access to the PowerPoint presentation that's been up today. And if you guys put your email address in the chat, I can get that sent over you to, um, today. I'll just add you to the list and we'll send you a copy of that. Um, that's no problem at all. Um, okay, so 
Mark, a couple questions for you. Um, are there any cemeteries um, located in Southern California? Uh, yes, depending on exactly how far south you want to go. Um, okay. There's Miramar National, uh, I believe that's in San Diego. Um, there's Bakersfield National in the Los Angeles area. Um, then working your way up, um, there is, uh, I think I said Bakersfield. No, I, I meant Riverside is in the Los Angeles. Then as you come full, come north, you got Bakersfield. Uh, you keep coming, keep coming north. You got um, San Joaquin there between Los Banos and right off the I or just outside there off the I five. Um, and then you got our state veteran cemetery in Monterey. So very nice. Um, let's and the see eligibility here. is 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 mirrored between the nationals and the states too. So just in case I missed that. Okay. Um, the next question is. Um, um, are there any, uh, what about cremation without a burial plot? Is that an option? Um, there are some, I believe uh, Riverside National has that. Is it, they call it a scattering garden. Um, Calvet does not have one of those at any one of the cemeteries we have. Um, the next question is, do benefits for burial apply to retired reserves, specifically gun salutes? Well, again, um, gun salutes are not typically done right now. And again, I don't know if that's a manpower thing for the for the military, um, but uh, there are conditions where reserve and or National Guard retirees are eligible uh, and that's located in, in uh, Title 38. Okay. Um, Another question is, um, is there an income limit in order to become a resident of Cal State Vet Homes? And actually, that would probably be for Paul. Sorry about that. I didn't read that no one. Worries. <laughs> just came in. <laughs> um, did you get that, Paul? <laughs> yeah, I did get that. Uh, okay. <laughs> there, there are income limits for the student that's, that, that is actually applying to use the fee waiver. Um, and those are available on the CalVet website. I believe it's $13,300. And I mean, I may be off by a couple of dollars, but it's it's in that neighborhood. If the student uh, earned more than that, they would not be eligible for the uh, for the benefit. Okay. Um, all right, I think, let me double check here. Um, a lot of people sent their email addresses and I am notating all of those. So thank you for doing that. I'll get you guys the copy of the PowerPoint. Um, it looks like Annette um, was able to post the, um, the exposures for McClellan. So thank you for posting that, Annette. Um, and I did, um, thank you uh, as well. I did look, look it up real quick. There are, there are no presumptives, but whoever that veteran was, I would certainly encourage them to file a claim because like I said, sometimes there's other ways to prove that exposure. Um, uh, even if the VA does not presume uh, you can still, you still have every right to file a claim and prove your case. Yes, that's correct. Absolutely. Uh, so um, somebody asked, um, will this and past webinar or seminar links be available to be viewed on um, the website? And yes, um, if you guys just Google CalVet, um, you can get to the CalVet website and then you click on the CalTEP the CalTAP link, which is under the um, laptop icon. And then if you scroll down, you'll be able to click on archives and that'll lead you to the next page, which will be um, a list of all of our previous webinars um, that have been recorded. Um, and we, you'll be able to see the videos there. And I also wanna say, if you're also speaking about links to different benefits that we were talking about during the presentation, we can also email um, a document with all the links to those different benefits that we were talking about throughout the webinar. So just put your email in the uh, chat and we'll make sure we send out um, a document with all the different links for the benefits that we talked about today. All right, I've got a couple more questions that came in. Um, so this question is, who can assist with caregiver support decision appeals? 
So this is Paul. And, uh, oh yeah, and, Paul, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a little out of my lane, but you, okay. the caregiver support program is a VA healthcare program. So you wanna contact your local VA healthcare facility and they should have a caregiver support coordinator. Um, you can also go to the va.gov website and there's information on the caregiver support program and they even have a uh, kind of a drill down, drop down menu where you can find uh, you know, one in your local area. Um, another question for you, Paul. Um, is there a survivor's pension if the survivor is also a veteran? Well, that that survivor would be eligible for the for his or her own pension. Um, so yes. Okay. Great. And hold on one second here. I believe there was another question. Uh, okay. Okay, so this one says, so apply for the vet home services if there is a long waiting list. Um, we are anticipating need in the next two years. My question is, oh gosh, I scrolled too fast. Hold on one second. My question, oh, oh gosh, I'm so sorry. Give me one second here. Oh, yeah. my question is, shouldn't, should we wait until the need? And uh, go ahead, Jen, I think you want to take this one. Uh, yeah, you don't have to wait until your need. You can start it now because there is such a long wait list. So if you want to go to Yachtville Home, which there's quite a long wait list, I would start the process now to um, to apply to go go there and talk to um, the uh, intake and and go to the homes and start doing the process now because it does take a while to get in. Some people wait uh, or s some veterans work. They wait and then they end up having to go to maybe uh, another site that they didn't want to go to, but they, they'll, pu they'll put the veteran at a different home until the, uh, the wait, until they're, I'm sorry, I'm not explaining this very well, sorry, <laughs> until there's an opening at the site that they want to actually go to. So yeah, I would recommend that start the process now, check out the site that you want to go to, the home that you want to go to, um, and then start uh, the residential package right now um, because it may take up to two years to, uh, to become a resident there. Um, Mark, I have a couple questions for you. Um, the first one is, how does one go about preparing, preparing for burial before death? Is there someone available to assist with this? So our recommendation is to find a funeral home in your local area, let them know your desire for cremation or casket burial, what have you, let them know that you want, you know, to be at whatever cemetery you want to be, be private or one of the state or national cemeteries. Um, and again, also make sure your family knows that that's what your wishes are. Um, get one of our pre-need applications put in either for one of the state cemeteries or one of the nationals, we both do it. Um, that way your eligibility portion is, is taken care of way ahead of time. Um, I'm not sure about the, the federal or the VA, but uh, I know the states, we send out a letter back to you um, saying that you know we've received your application and your eligibility has been established um, you know, keep that with your with your uh, important papers. We will keep those um, uh, saved here in files as well. But um, that, that's typically the best way to get started. Great. Um, and I actually that was the last question for you, um, Paul. I have one other question for you too, and this is more of a um, a homes general question. And I think I might be able to help you answer this a little bit, but. Um, it, um, I think I read the um, income limit question wrong a little earlier, but is there an income limit in order to become a resident of one of the veterans homes? Um, I don't know if there's an income limit. I think they base the um, the price of the homes based on what your income is, if I'm understanding that correctly. The fees are charged at the home based on um, right, based on your income and your level of care. so they you know they range. Um, between 47.5% and 70% of your income, depending on your level of care. Um, but the homes, and, and I, I'm not in admissions, so I really don't want to speak 
yeah. too directly to this, but the homes do require income information when they're uh, as part of the application process. Um, someone also also asked about um, what the average age of um, the veterans or what the average age of veterans are in a home. Um, I don't really know if we have, do we have an average age for that or it's kind of all. Well, um, I mean, I could, I could give you a ballpark, but the homes, um, they are for age similar to, they're very similar to VA pension. They are for aged or disabled veterans. So most of them are, and the VA defines aged as over 65. Um, so they're for aged or disabled. We had a, we've had veterans here at Yountville that were in their 40s because they were disabled. Um, but most of the ones here at Yountville anyway, um, are, I would say the average is kind of a Vietnam era uh, veteran, maybe uh, some younger, but that'd probably be the average. Okay. Um, and we have um, just two more questions for George. And then I think, um, I think that we will be um, it for the day. So um, George, um, the first one is, um, is CalVet cemetery requirements different than the VA and should we apply for both? Uh, the requirements are exactly the same for both. Um, and uh, you can obviously, you can apply for either one um, or both. Um, and by applying, putting in your um, eligibility request in, it doesn't obligate you to either one. Um, and then the last question is, um, are cremation services covered if the ashes are going to be start, stored in something like a jar? Um, well, that's more of a funeral home question. Um, we, you know, and maybe that's something I should have covered too, is that the, the state and national cemeteries, we only cover the burial portions, the, ma the maintenance of the gravesite itself and the headstones. Um, we do not um, take care of any part of, of uh, a casket preparation, cremation preparation, um, any, any of those services. That's all done through a funeral home. Okay. Um, one last question um, rolled in for you, Paul. Um, if, if you become eligible for a home, but you're not ready to quite move in yet, um, do you have to go back on the wait list or how does that work? Uh, <laughs> I know it's kind of a, that, yeah, kind of a tough I, one. Yeah, again, I, I'd have to oh, refer you admissions. to admissions yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, yeah but typically, if, now I'll, I'll, I'll give a, a couple of real world examples. I would think typically they, they put you in the back of the line, but we had a guy, uh, a veteran that was supposed to move in in uh, just the last couple of months. I think it was about February. And again, he'd been going through this process for many months to get into the home. They gave him the move in date and he had, he had some surgery scheduled. And there was going to be some rehab after the surgery. So they, in his case, they pushed his move-in date back to, I think it's the end of June, um, to allow for his, you know, his treatment and his, uh, and his rehabilitation. So uh, I think it'd probably be case by case, but it, you, you probably want to direct that to one of the admissions folks at one of the homes. I'm actually going to put the phone number in the chat for um, admissions. And, and also, Jenna, on that last question, I think Mark would probably agree. I know when I'm counseling vets, um, the funeral directors are an incredible resource uh, with regard to uh, burial benefits and, 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 and formations and that sort of stuff. So even a call to a local funeral home uh, may get that uh, veteran the answer they're looking, they're looking for. That's a really great idea. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate that. We'll have to add that to our um, our little list of ideas too. So thank you. Um, so right now, that's it. I am all done with um, the questions that um, we had. So I'm gonna um, send things back over to Jen. And um, I'll also go ahead and uh, put that survey link back in um, the chat one more time um, as well for you, Jen. Great. So uh, we, before we end, I really would like to let you guys know that um, in addition to this webinar, we have all sorts of other webinars recorded. We'll have this one recorded. In a couple of days, you'll be able to rewatch this if you had 
to leave for any any reason or if you want to share this video with other people um it's going to be on our website but this is our upcoming webinar slide here showing you what's coming up in uh what caltab's doing coming up and to uh to register for this you're just going to do it just like you registered for the other one for um our this webinar today um you're going to go to the calvet website I'm going to go to uh, the CalTap portal and from there go down and then just uh, click on register. It's going to take you to that Eventbrite, just like you did for this one, the Eventbrite. Um, with that, uh, this is our, again, this is our contact slide. I know your needs are going to change over time. Maybe right now you don't need this or that benefit, but maybe you will in the future, or maybe you think of something else. Please, please give us a call. We are here for you, cradle to grave for you and your family. Um, this is our phone number. Uh, we actually answer the phones. Uh, uh, and then this is our, again, our website. Check it out. Play with it, super user friendly. And here is our email. Uh, this is CalTap uh, email inbox. We answer this every single day. You will get um, a response within 24 hours if it's during the week. Um, and if it's on the weekend, we'll answer you on, on that Monday prior or following it. Um, again, please, please, uh, we really would like you to fill out that survey. So if you, you know, we greatly appreciate all of your feedback. Thank you so much for being with us today. Um, we're gonna leave the we're gonna not we're gonna leave the webinar going for a little bit, so you can copy and paste any of those links that are in the chat, and then also give you guys a chance to put in your emails if you would like uh, the PowerPoint or if you'd like the links um, to all the different benefits that we talked about today. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to all of our presenters for all the fantastic information, resources, and benefits, and what you guys do for the community, veterans, and their families, and our service members. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone.